So this week we've seen the release of Jet Engine 2.3 and with that have been some significant updates, things that I know that I've been looking for for quite some time. Thankfully, most of those things have been addressed. So in this video, I'm just going to give you a brief overview of the three key things that I think are probably the most important update in 2.3. So if you're interested to in find out what's been added, how to use them, and all those basic kind of things, join me and I'm going to take you through all of them right now. Let's kick this off by taking a look at one of the coolest features that's now been added to Jet Engine 2.3, and that's the ability to use the map listing module with markers and pop-ups. So what do I mean? Well, here's a very simple example. We've got a map and you can see we've got three markers, one in London, one in Cardiff, and one in Edinburgh. If we scroll down, you can see we've got three matching properties underneath, one in Edinburgh, London, and Cardiff. If we click on any of these, we'll have a little pop-up that'll show that particular property. Click on a different one, you can see that pops up another one, and we can click and then go through and take a look at the property itself. So if I click, it'll take me through to the property details. I can do exactly the same down the bottom. I can click on one of these, it'll take me through to the property details. So how is all this set up and configured, and is it complex to do? Well, the simple answer is no, it's not complicated to do whatsoever. And in this, I'm going to just show you how it's all set up. Some of the things you need to take into consideration when you're setting it up as well. Now, there are a couple of stages you need to take into consideration before you start setting up the map. You need to have some listing set up. You need to have a post type, a custom post type, and you can use taxonomies as well if you want to. So let's take a look at what I've got set up and then you can see how all this is going to work. We come to Jet Engine. Open up the post types. I've got one simple post type, and this is really stripped back just to give you an example. This is just for the properties. I've got three custom meta fields, an address, a room, which is a repeater, which we will take a look at in the next part of this video, and a gallery. The only thing that really matters, though, is the taxonomy that's associated with for this example, because that denotes where these particular properties are in the country. So if we go to taxonomies, you can see what I've done is I've created a property location. Now, you're not limited to using it this way. I just found this is an incredibly simple way to use it with the map side of things. And also a nice, simple, easy way to organize all of your different properties. So all I've got inside here is basically just the property location. Nothing more than that. It's a single field. So if we come and take a look at one of the properties and we'll see exactly how that's all set up and configured. Normal things you'd expect, we've got the property location on the right hand side, which like I say is that taxonomy. Other than that, it's just a normal kind of post type, nothing special about that. Next thing we need to make sure that we've got though is the listing. So if we come into the listing, you can see I've got a property listing. And if I open that up and edit it with Elementor, you'll see it's a very simple setup. The featured image, which is clickable and a link the name of the actual property and the location. So if we come back over to the property list, you can see that's exactly what you're seeing here. Now this is important because what you're seeing here is also gonna be replicated if you choose the option to show these pop-ups on the map itself. So you can see, I can click, and it's a slightly smaller version, but it is exactly the same. So whatever you set up inside this particular listing is what you'll see if you choose the option to display those listing pop-ups inside your map. So with that in mind, that's all we've done is create that. So if I come back out now and we go back into the dashboard, we need to make sure that we've got Jet Engine set up to be able to work with the maps. So we're going to come out of the Jet Engine section. And from there, we need to make sure under the modules, we've got maps enabled. You save that, that will open up the new tab. So I'm going to open the map settings up and there's a couple of different options inside here you need to configure correctly to make sure this is all going to work. The first is the API key for Google Maps. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole process of how you get the API key, but you do need to make sure that whatever else you set up on there, you include the geocoding API as part of your Google Maps configuration. Without that, you'll have a problem like I did trying to get things all set up. So make sure that's enabled. You may need to leave it five or 10 minutes for Google Maps to update and sort of pass that data down and that, all those options down, but just bear that in mind. The next is the Disable Google Maps API JS file. Now, this is only needed if on any page you want to use this map function with these clickable markers, you have another Google Map active. So in other words, you may have a Google Map in the footer that's going to be the location of your head office, for example. If you do that and you put another map on the same page, even though it's in a different template file, you'll need to make sure you disable the Google, Google Maps API JS file, or you may find you get a blank screen or you just don't have everything working the way you expect it to. So if you find that's the problem, 
there's your solution. The next two options are kind of linked together. Preload the coordinates by address and the meta fields to preload. If you preload those coordinates, it's basically going to go and look at the way you've set up your data, preload that and speed up the whole process of working with these maps. So make sure you enable that and also list any of the fields that you've got set up that include map addresses that you want to use for these clickable maps. So you can see mine is underscore address. And if we go back over to jet engine into my post types, you can see if we go to properties, my address field is underscore address. So I'm just making sure that that's all set up inside there. Other than that, there's nothing else you need to really configure inside that section. That's it, all done and dusted. So now we've got those pieces in place, everything is configured, we can now create the page or the template wherever you want to use this sort of interactive clickable map. So I'm creating a blank page. All we're gonna do is we're gonna call this Map Test Live, and we'll just hit Publish on there so I can save that, and we'll open up Elementor. Now we need to find the relevant icon or the relevant widget. So we're going to do map listing. So you can see we've got a new item now called map listing. If we drag and drop that into our page, you can see it says, please select a listing to show. And this is where we're going to choose that listing template that's going to be used to create those various different entries. So you can see I've got two options inside there. We've got property listing and repeater listing. I'm going to choose the property listing. That will pull the map in for me. And as you can see now, we need to tell it where the address field comes from. So all we need to do is just drop in that underscore address again, and that's everything set up. So you can see our map is now displaying, but obviously there are no markers on there to be able to use those. So how do we deal with that side of things? What we're gonna do is we're gonna come down to the marker option, and from there we're gonna change the marker type from image, because we've got no image loaded in at the moment, then nothing is gonna show. But we're gonna choose the icon for this example, and then we're just going to simply choose an icon we want to use. So I'm just going to do a search for map and we'll use these map pins. Insert that and you can see there's our three individual different businesses. We can click and we can see each one of those different businesses, one of those hotels, whatever they are, listed inside there. They're clickable, so like I say, we can go through and take a look at the actual property itself. Now, we can control the pop-up size. If you find that's a little bit big, we could easily adjust the size of that. We'll say 250. And you can see now if we click, it's a little bit smaller. Everything is scaling normally. We can add a pop-up pin if we want to, a vertical offset, all those kinds of styling things. We can adjust various different aspects. We can even apply post queries to this if we want to. So if you want to adjust anything like a, an order and offset, you can click and add that in there. If you want to, you can choose any of the different options. So taxonomy queries, meta queries, and so on. So it's up to you if you want to query anything on there. We can also adjust the widget visibility so you can hide this if there's nothing to show. So you can make sure you don't end up with a blank map and just cause confusion for people thinking there's nothing they can actually click on when they just basically have nothing to click on. Now it's already pretty cool, but how about if you had lots of different properties all spread around the country and you literally only wanted to see the ones based in London or Cardiff? Can we apply filters to this? Absolutely. So let's take a look. Come back out of this, we're gonna go back into our filters and I've already created a very simple filter. So you come to our smart filters, I've got one set up called property location. Open that up and you can see all this is, is a checkbox list that pulls the data from the taxonomy that I've created. And the taxonomy is just simply the locations of the property. So Cardiff, Bristol, London, you know, those kinds of things. So everything is set up as you'd expect it to in there, nothing is complex. Let's go back in now to our page and let's apply those filters to it. So we're going to come back into our map test, open up our new page, and we're simply going to do a search for filter. From there, we're going to grab this cut, this checkbox filter, drag and drop that to the top, choose our filter, which is property location. And you can see we then got the option to select where we're going to apply this filter. Now, you've probably seen this before if you've used JetSmart filters. We now have a new option at the bottom that says Jet Engine Maps. Click on that. Now this filter is going to apply to these maps. So let's hit update and let's preview our map. So there we go, there's our filter at the top. I want Edinburgh and now I only see Edinburgh. I can scroll on that map, click, take a look at the property and go and jump through to that. If I want Edinburgh and London, I can just select more than one parameter and there we go, that's now applied it to our map and we can easily see and click on any of those different property locations, super simple. Now I know when I release this video, there's gonna be a question that's gonna be asked in the comment section because this comes up quite a lot, not just on my channel, but I've also seen it on other things to do with Jet Engine and some other tools is, 
can we use the filters to filter based upon the distance from something? At this point in time, I don't believe that's currently possible with Jet Engine and Jet Smart filters. I could be wrong, but I'm fairly sure that's not an option right now. Hopefully this will be something they'll add in in the future, and maybe that'll be something that we'll see in the next iteration of Jet Engine. But for now, I don't think it's actually included. Now the next thing I'm super pleased about is they've updated the whole repeater region thing. Now this has been one of my gripes for quite some time is that it's great to have repeater regions as part of Jet Engine, but the implementation was probably out of the reach of many people because it still required an understanding of the code that needs to be applied and all these different kinds of things that just made it feel a little clunky. Well, thankfully, that's something that's been rectified now in Jet Engine 2.3. So I've come through and taken a look now at one of the property listings. And if we scroll down, right at the bottom, you see we've got a section called Our Rooms. Now, this is set up as a repeater region, so I can add in as many of those rooms as I want, and it will automatically update as I add more rooms in. So it's pretty cool to see we can do that. But how do we go about building it, and how is it updated and made the whole process considerably easier? As before, I come back over to the dashboard, and we're taking a look at the custom post time. I've already got a custom field set up, that is set as a repeater, which as you can see is the room repeater. Everything is set up as you'd expect with three repeater fields inside there. We've got a photo, a room name, and a room description. So with that in place, the next thing we need to do then is create a listing. So everything is being basically set up and configured and designed as a listing, and then we can reference those in the various parts of our site. So let's take a look now how we create a repeater listing. This is just the listing item. So what we're going to do, we're going to add new. First thing we're going to do is tell it what's the listing source. We're going to click from there and we're going to tell it it's a repeater field. So this is one of those new items that have been added in. Once we choose that, now opens up some additional options. From post type, we're going to choose our properties because obviously we want to pull this repeater region from our property type. Repeater source, we can choose between Jet Engine and Advanced Custom Fields. So if you are using ACF over using Jet Engine to create your custom post types, maybe your taxonomies and so on, you can still use this in exactly the same way. Next up, we need to say, what repeater field do we want to use? So if you can't remember, if we jump back over to our custom post type, you can see our repeater region has got an ID of room. So all we need to do is simply type in room inside there. Then we're going to give this a name. We're just going to call this Test Repeater listing and then finally the listing view do you want to use elemental to style this or you're going to use gutenberg blocks we're going to stick to elemental for this and then we say we're going to create our listing item once we've done that we're then ready to start building our listing item out now you can use and i would recommend that you use simply the options we have as part of jet engine itself so things like the dynamic image or the dynamic field now we've already gone ahead and done that so i'm simply going to paste that inside here and this listing template is basically just created, as I've just said, out of dynamic fields. We've got three inside there. We've got the dynamic field for the, fe the featured image, the photo. We've got one for the name of the room itself and one for the description of the room. That's it. There's nothing complex about this. It's all simply just using that widget and then being styled inside Elementor itself. Now, if you want to, you can see we've got this at full width. We can easily adjust that and make sure this just sits at the size that we want. So we come into settings and listing settings. We can set a preview width in here. I'm going to set that to, uh, let's just take this to about 500, somewhere around there, just so it lets me see kind of how this would look. And it's quite a nice way of working. So there's our listing. We're going to hit publish on that. We've now created our repeater. Now we need to go through and actually set that up to use it. So to come out of this, exit to our dashboard. We're simply going to come into our templates and down to our theme builder. And from there, I'm going to open up my default property single inside Elementor, which is the theme file, the template file that I've set up to show all of my property details. If I scroll down, you can see there is the repeater region all set up. We're going to delete that from there and we're going to recreate it now fresh from scratch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down and I'm going to search for listing and I want to choose the listing grid. So I'm going to drag and drop that underneath our rooms. And the next thing we need to do is just simply tell it what we want to use. So if we look at the edit listing grid on the left hand side, we can choose our listing. So we're going to open that up. We're going to choose the test repeater listing, which is what we've just created. Click on that. You can see that now pulls in those designs and the data that's associated. Change our number of columns over to two so it looks a little bit better inside our design. And we can adjust anything else we may want to inside there. But that's literally it. 
you've got all your configuration options underneath if you want to set things up like the post number, any message, whether it's a masonry grid and so on. You can even come in and query this in the same way that you could do with any of the other listings. We can query against posts, terms, users and so on. And the same with widget visibility. So all those options are there. It's just now been expanded to allow us to use repeater regions without having to touch any kind of coding much much better and great for people that are visual designers and not necessarily people that want to dabble with that code so the third and final thing i want to show you in this update video are the custom templates for the checkboxes and radio meta fields if you're using forms as part of jet engine 2.3 what do i mean by that well let's take a little look at this basic example on screen normal form but you can see now where we've got checkboxes we've got something a bit more interesting we've got a photograph of the actual property we're talking about and i can check that I can check whichever one or ones I'm interested in. And then when we submit that data over, it's going to submit it in a nice way. So it just makes it a much more visual way of working. So let me show you how we can do this again. So this is, as always, everything we've covered in this video has pretty much all been about the listing options. And the same kind of holds true here. We're going to need to create a custom listing that's going to hold that checkbox or radio box. And then we can then apply that into our form. So as always, the first thing you need to do is come into Jet Engine, into the Jet Engine settings, and make sure you've got forms enabled. As long as you've got forms enabled, we'll see the option on the left-hand side to go into the forms themselves. Now, before we do that, let's go and take a look at the listing option. So we're going to open up the listings, and inside there, you can see I've created one called Radio Button Test. I'm going to edit that with Elementor and take a look at what's going on. Now, first of all, this is just a basic, plain, simple layout. Nothing complicated about this. We've simply pulled in the relevant data. So we're using the dynamic image for the image we're going to use and the dynamic option for a dynamic field for the name of the actual property. The only thing that's different inside here is this particular widget that we're using. If we click, you can see we've got a new widget called edit check mark. So once you select that, and let's just take this out and I'll go through the process with you. So let's just say we're going to search for that check mark. So you say edit check mark, drag and drop that inside there. So you can see it's a very simple widget. We've got default and we've got checked and then we have style. And all it really does is allow us to set up what icon we want to use and what it's going to look like when it's checked and when it's unchecked. So let's just come into the icon library. We're going to choose this circle and then we're going to come up the checked option and do the same again. This time we're going to choose the checked circle. Insert that. So we've now set that up. We've got the options we want. We can come into the style section and we can just control that. So default we'll leave as is. Checked will come in and we're going to change the icon color to green just so you get a nice visual representation of that being checked. We'll hit update or save if you're creating a new layout for this and then we're ready to go in and actually apply this into our form. So right now I have a very simple form that simply has a name, address and the default fields of post ID and the submit button. We're going to add a new field and from there we're going to open that up to edit it. First thing we need to do is make sure we've set this up correctly. So we're going to change the type I'm going to set that to either be checkboxes or radio. We'll set it to radio for this example. We're going to give this a name and we're just going to call this property. We'll set the label to be property as well. You can set this to be required if you want to. It's up to you. I'm going to just uncheck that. Manual input, we're going to change that from that. And we're going to come down and we're going to say we want to set this to be posts. So this is going to link it through to our post type of properties. Then we've got the post type. We're going to click and expand that out. We're going to say we want properties. So so that's just simply saying where the data is going to be pulled from the posts and because it's a custom post type, we're choosing it for the properties. Next up, we just need to make sure that we want to use a custom template. And all we need to do is just click on this icon that opens up the option now to choose what template we want to use. Now, the template in this example is just that listing we just created. So we're going to click to open that up and we're going to say we want to have the radio button test. Click on there. And other than that, you can set any other options that are relevant, such as, you know, whether this field visibility is for specific groups and so on, or any CSS class. We're going to leave that, hit apply changes, and we're going to just simply drag that into position. Update our form. And all we're going to do is come back onto our page. I've already inserted the form into a page and then nothing more than just inserted the form widget. We'll refresh that. And once we've refreshed it, we'll see that we've got all things set up. There's our different properties. You can see all our properties should be listed. And if we added more properties in, they would be listed there as well. So we can control exactly how this looks, the styling, the effect, all those kinds of things. Super easy, but it makes for a much more visual way of allowing people to interact with your form and choose things over and above just the name of it, which may not mean anything to anybody. So with something like this, it's just super easy. 
So those are the key new features in Jet Engine 2.3. I know I'm excited about this new release, but what are your thoughts on it? Are these the kind of features you've been waiting for that kind of been holding you back from moving over to Jet Engine? Let me know in the comment section below. Drop your comments, your questions, your feedback in there, and we can have a conversation. Now, if you're thinking of grabbing yourself a subscription to Crocoblock or just grabbing a copy of Jet Engine, all the links for that are in the description below. They are affiliate links, but they cost you no more money, but you do help support the channel. As always, my name's been Paul C. This has been WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.